Hello everyone, uh, my name is Akol Agwek Ngong. I am a former president of Boer community in the US and I have been a resident of Brahman for the last 18 years. I'm part of the former Lost Boys of Sudan. Uh, in the studio today is Mr. Panchol Jankunyukur. Uh, he was an all-time educator from Sudan, uh, beginning teachings in 1978. And the reason why he is in the studio today is because uh, he was uh, one of the founding teachers of the Lost Boys Education uh, back in Ethiopia in 1987-1988. And he continued with that program uh, through internally displaced person camps of Pachala and Narus, and he continued with the same program at a Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya. And so he has been a part of Lost Boys' story from the day they entered Ethiopia. And the reason why we brought him to the show today is because he has been visiting us in the U.S., and we felt like the story of the Lost Boys' education has been missed. And so our focus today uh, in the studio is to talk about how he and his colleague actually established education. It is going to focus on education of the lost boys from uh, Ethiopia all the way to Kenya. And then we'll talk very briefly about how the resettlement of the lost boys came about in the late 1990s that we came here, and if there is any other things that we can talk about, uh, we will. So uh, I thank our Brahman viewers uh, and all people who are watching us around the world uh, today. Uh, so we welcome you, uh, Usas Panchol, uh, to the studio. Welcome to Brahman. And with me here is Megan, who is also going to be a cause of the program. Again, our program will focus purely, purely on the Lost Boys education since the, uh, uh, Mr. Panchol was the founder, one of the founding uh, members who actually established the program. So welcome. Uh, do you want to say anything, Megan? No, welcome. Thank you so much for joining uh, us. Thank you very much. As you have heard, my name is Panchol Jankuit. Uh, formerly, I was a teacher in profession before war broke out in San Sudan in early 1983. Uh, then due to the insecurity situation, I migrated to, to Ethiopia and to Kakuma, a refugees camp in 1988. Uh, the idea of movement to Ethiopia was to seek for the security and better life. From there, uh, we are really very lucky to have a, a chairman from our community, uh, Mr. Piang Deng, deputized by uh, Tembiar. Then the logistics was uh, Mr. Lera Yom. In the refugees camp, it has been realized that most of the children in the refugees camps miss their parents. And they are just loitering without proper care. He has decided to call a community meeting whereby people sit, sat down and then identified the number of these minors within the, the, the community. They organized, at least at the end, they identified almost 12,000 children. As a result, people went and organized for a meeting so that they are regrouped in group, in which every group was made 1,000 each group 1,000. They established almost 10 groups of miners. They built for themselves uh, shelters with the support of the caretakers. Then we, the teachers, who in, 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 we, the teachers, volunteers to continue, if possible, in take, taking care, then organize some sort of teaching. With the help of UNHCR, and the management of the camp we were able to open some classes for them. And it was a bit very difficult because which curriculum to adapt 
because in Ethiopia, the, they were teaching the, 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 the Amharic, which is contrary with our situation back home. Then, culturally, we differ a bit with, the, with, the, with Ethiopia, so we resort to decide jointly with, with the UNHCR and the management of the camp to adopt the Kenyan curriculum. So the Kenyan curriculum was adopted was in adopted Ethiopia? Due to similarities in culture and environment. Then from there, UNHCR was able to facilitate and bring in some books and curriculum. And then we started teaching in 1988. We continued in 1989. We continued up to 90. In 91, when the, president, the Prime Minister Mangisto was overthrown, then where we had a lot of worries. Then we decided to evacuate children to the liberated areas of South Sudan, particularly in Poshala. That was very hard and difficult withdrawal because the, the, the attacking group were following us. Then we have to rush. A lot of losses occurred in a particular place called Gilo. We managed to move up to Poshala. In Poshala, they were organized and we continue with them. We organize them and we keep them in a very hard life because there were no food for some days. But Red Cross came in and there's RRC, which is San Sudan Relief and Rehabilitation Commission. They came for an assessment. Later on, after one month, the food was brought uh, airlifted. We continued for the whole of 91. In 92, there was also uh, a preparation of the San Sudan, Sudan government uh, joined with the Supreme government to attack Poshala. Then we had to move out from Poshala with the children. Some of them were later on caught and sent to Khartoum, <laughs> and we rushed with some of them up to a place, up to Buma. From Buma, we came to Koragrab. Luckily enough, the Red Cross followed us and then uh, came with some uh, trucks that facilitate us because it's an arid area where there's no water. An area also was completely full of hazards. Then we managed to move off to Magos. And I was really very happy just to see. In this picture. Uh, in this picture, I was with these children. <laughs> and in this place, we were even attacked. We lost some, some children, almost seven something of that kind loss in this attack. Huh. From there, were you here? I was here. I mean, in this picture. Uh, you were here in this uh, picture. And in so myself, I, I, yeah. I was accompanying them in this picture. Yeah. So I was really very happy just and to see this one. where are you in this picture? Uh, <laughs> you cannot see. Uh, you cannot see. But I mean, because where in Sudan are you? It would have been uh, between a place called Magoth and Kapoita. Okay. And so Kapoita. somewhere between Pashan and... And Narus. Narus. And Narus. Okay. Mm. Then it was a long journey, very hard. We managed to move up to Kapoita. Then from there to Narus. And how many children are here at this point? Uh, it would, the number increased because we were moving with some families that were falling away. Almost 16,000, the number increased. 16,000. 16,000. Yeah. So we move, we travel up to Narus. In Narus, the area was prepared by, uh, by the Red Cross. Some food was, were, were there prepared and and, and then when we came to Nauru's, they were provided food, people settled. Very unfortunate attack again, Kapoita. We had to move the children to the Kenyan border. Mm. When we reached Kenyan border, UNHCR came and picked the, the children to, to Kakuma. Kakuma. That was the little story about the, how yeah. we move that long journey up to Kakuma. And so, at that point, 16,000 are moving into um, the Kakuma well, camps. Yeah, uh, exactly. And how many people are <coughs> in Kakuma already? Because that's, <coughs> that's a huge camp there, right? The, it's a huge camp. There was nobody at Kakuma. At that point? And so it was actually opened by the UNHCR. Okay. And so the teacher, uh, uh, Mr. Pankiol, just said that there were 16,000 children. Yeah. Children. But the, when you add the families... I do not include the families oh, because okay. it's what, that's a mob movement. Yeah. Uh, we are unable even to count. But we know the number of the minors because we were the one escorting them. Yeah. So in Kakuma, the process of continuing with education continued. 
with the support of UNHCR, some NGOs that are connected with education came in, like Radabanan, uh, uh, like Radabanan, uh, well food, uh, so sorry, Lutheran well, World Lutheran Federation, World Federation, Federation. They came in and support IRC International Rescue support Committee. the program. So we came and divided the teachers into two. A group that stay at the residence areas with them to control them because they don't have parents. We call them caretakers. <laughs> A group that teach in the class physically. So we came and divide the teachers into two. The group that they sleep with them, control them. Uh, cancel them, mm -hmm. uh, and then a group that teach them at day at day time. Mm -hmm. That that was the process, and, and education continued until the process of resettlement came in, until the some of them just decided to come to this end. So that's all about that. That's all about the the movement of these people and, mm -hmm. and, and how we organize them and feed them to Kakuma. How you move from Ethiopia, it's it's from 12, Ethiopia. Mm. back to South Sudan, to South Sudan, and then back to Kakuma, and back to and then then uh, and just travel that long way up to way, Kakuma. Yeah. yeah. Now you are both originally from Boer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you know one another before the you were displaced? Did you know one another? I in didn't Boer? know. He he knows my parent, yeah. but I don't I don't think he knew me. Yeah. Mm. But since the founding of the schools back in 1988, he was he became my teacher. Yeah. So I knew him then. Yeah. Yeah. And and I have known him throughout uh, 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 this time. Yeah. Uh, because he was uh, uh, he was one of the founding <clears throat> educators who actually built the program. Uh, what is the importance? How did you get called to become an educator? What is the importance of education to you? Yeah, in fact, it's a professional, as I told you earlier, that I was a teacher. I'm, I'm, I'm trained on how to manage the primary education mm -hmm. in terms of how to manage the primary school the, the, the curriculum, how to manage the resources, and, and so forth. So myself, I was the inspector of zone one because we divided, we divided, we divided the schools into zones. And that was a so, thousand students. Uh, yeah, I, I was given zone one as an inspector and member of education committee. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that was the arrangement. But my, my job as teacher, I like it because I'm trained on that line. Uh, so when I came here, I thought I have to volunteer because these children are children of my own country. So if I'm, I'm staying idle, I have to give them what I have. So that was my contribution to my community. Yeah. And what's important about education? Why, why is it so important? Why, why when we're, as a people, struggling for food and shelter and life, why is education so important in that? Yeah, it was really very important because most of the schools in South Sudan were closed. Yeah. Because war, the civil war was very tough in the South. Some areas are overrun by the, 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 the SPLM. And some areas were still under the, 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 the government. The, the government. So they, they remain even those, those, those towns under the government remains as military barracks because the citizens ran out from it. Mm -hmm. So the, completely there was no education. So we thought when the uh, when this country got an independent, who will manage it? So that's why we thought of educating this group so that when it comes to the level, to the stage of development, and then they, they can pick up from there. Yeah. So yeah. you're looking that ahead. That was the, the, yeah. how we, we see it was important. Now, the Megan question is very interesting. I, I assume that, because we, I didn't know, I assume that when we had, when you had this conversation with the UN, probably they thought about giving food, and medicine, but education was not their priority. So you might have actually negotiated with the UN to actually uh, support education as well. You see, when you see the rights of the human being, education is part of rights. And that's why we convinced the UNHCR. Uh, food is a service that is a right of the person, and education also is a right. Mm -hmm. So as right, we have to struggle to see into it that these children are getting educated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell, can you talk a little bit about what you were saying, the difference culturally between the Ethiopian curriculum and the Kenyan curriculum? Uh, when it comes to the language, the, the medium of instruction in Ethiopia is Amharic. The, the, the Amharic. national language, Amharic. Uh, the national language uh, is Amharic. Yeah. And then our national language is considered in Sudan is uh, English and Arabic. Yeah. 
So when you take uh, an, uh, 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 a language, it, it will not suit the environment mm. uh, at home. Yeah. And then, I mean, one of the things that strikes me, and, I've, and, and I'm very naive about it, is the numbers of different cultural languages from Sudan that have come to settle in Vermont. And what was that like in the camps, to have so many different cultural backgrounds just from South Sudan, tribal differences or tribal languages? Uh, in is fact, I'm, I'm not clear a bit with the question. So the question very much is, especially when people with different languages mm. from South Sudan came to this refugee camp, mm. so who might not have the same language in which they communicate, how did you manage? Oh, <laughs> to, to actually see, call, came, <laughs> run the camp and manage these people and, and orient them. Specifically around education. Around education. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You see, when we migrated from South Sudan to the neighboring countries, our, <coughs> our national language was English and Arabic. <coughs> so we communicated in Arabic and English. And that's so really communication common. was very easy. There was no problem. When you go to your local community, you speak your own language. But when <laughs> come to, 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 to the general <coughs> situation, you speak English and Arabic. Yeah. yeah, we use them both. And the South Sudanese identity becomes important. more important. Yeah. Yes, as a follow-up to Megan's question, uh, Panchol is, if I remember very clearly in Ethiopia in 1998, when you opened the schools, mm. we were only, you only started the program with education and there was no Arabic. Mm. Why? Yes, we shared discussion on the issue. Uh, people thought Arabic was to be included to the curriculum. But where will you get the textbooks? And mm -hmm. uh, it was difficult because we had a line, a very hard line between Khartoum and, and us here. Mm. So we thought, when, when we adopt an Arabic, where will you get the books? It was very difficult. So in, the, in that regard, we say we better, we better take English only. Can you give us a picture, a call of what the school, what school looks like for you in Kakuma? There is school at Kakuma, thank you. The, the, there is school at the, as, as the teacher said, uh, when, let me just go back to Ethiopia, to, to Penjudo. Uh, when, they is, when they started, and I wanted to ask them a question, when they started the program, there were no buildings. Mm. There, were no, there were no stationery, there were no pen, there were no notebooks, there were no books, there were no schools. And so we had to start, they had to group us into 12 groups, as he said. Then they had to recruit teachers I believe the teacher told me they recruited about 75 people from the local population. Mm. 75, maybe there were 10 of them already, 85. How does, can you imagine, how does 85 people teach 12,000 people? What yeah. kind of a school is it? So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we came and divided it into two sessions. The, we teach them at the morning session, group. And they go off. When this group moves, we start with another group. Mm. Uh, this is how we continued. But we, we, we continued the recruitment because whenever we feel those who knows how to write, and then we also we continue recruiting. The number increased. That was the start. Okay. Uh, 85, 80, 80 something was the start. But at the end, we recruited a lot of the people. And, and with uh, no schools, so with no books, no paper, no pens, no buildings, what's the most important thing that you want to teach a group of kids? Let me just answer uh, that question. Mm. Yeah. So what if I remember very clearly, they started opening schools under the trees. So when it rains, then there is no school. Ah, uh, exactly. When it is sunny like today, there is a school. So that was it. Then they divided, as the teacher said, they divided into two sessions. There is was morning session, if I remember, and evening and afternoon sessions. The same class, the same teacher. So if you are in the morning session, you come in the morning and you are taught arithmetic and English. Then you go home, then the second, the afternoon group comes, the same teacher, and then they are taught the same subject. Mm -hmm. And so what became most important was you sit in a circle, if I remember, I remember my first uh, great teacher was uh, uh, Usas Gabriel Bach. So he would, he would make us sit in the circle, okay? 
and then we will write A, B, C in the dirt. And so I remember my first exam was actually done in the dirt, A, B, C. That was how we were tested. Mm -hmm. And so the UN came in and they saw that uh, the teachers already organized the program, so they brought material, as the teacher said, they brought uh, books, they brought, uh, you know, they brought uh, the first grade books from Kenya called Allow Children and distributed to us. And so over the three years, the program improved. We actually built our own schools, our own classroom. We built our own dorms. And then the UN supplied us uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, 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 with the books and the notebooks and the pens and the pencil. Uh, what I don't remember is, is, and I, I don't know, were you paid or were you volunteers? We were volunteers. 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 There was no pay. Uh, and this seems like it must have come culturally from the communities that you were born in, mm -hmm. the community that you grew up in. There must have been a strong support for education as a value, as you say, as a human right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, 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 and if I could jump in there, yes, the the they felt our elder they felt that that the, 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 that the population of south sudan was losing uh, education uh, because of the war uh, if the if if no if, if if our generation was not educated then that would be a problem mm -hmm. when peace comes so they 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 felt as he said that uh, that uh, that they should volunteer to develop us and 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 and, and I, I didn't remember what was happening, what the discussion were. We were just there and received whatever service that was given to us. And in this case, it was education. Yeah. In addition, the, we had also women group organized in the camp. And whenever there are children that malnourished, then they organize porridge, the, 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 the soft food for them. <laughs> So they usually come as women and they move every morning with, with some kind of uh, uh, soft food for, for minority children. Yeah. So the, the, that group also, the, the, that was their contribution. So they were also considered as caretakers mm -hmm. because daily they just come and move with this. And whenever there are minority children, then they are given services separately on a regular basis. Yeah. So that was the contribution we made as volunteers, as teachers, and even the community also was also very concerned about their life. Yeah. The word is often lost boys, but are there lost girls? Is it lost children? Boys and girls? The, 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 yeah, and even here, we, as, as I said here on the program many times, uh, yes, there were lost girls. Uh, but what, as the teacher said, the girls who were there in the refugee camp were put up in the post set families. But we remain in the minor group, mm. and and so. But it's still, as you can remember, we 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 had lost girls who came here. About, yeah. about three thousand and six hundred who resettled here in the U.S. Yeah. We have a handful of lost girls who ended up here with us. Yeah. yeah. But the name lost boys, I didn't know until I I came here was when I when people called me lost when boys. When you came to the United yeah, States. And then, and then people began calling us lost boys. That was how I learned about the name. Yeah. Before that, nope. Yeah. <laughs> we were actually called minors, unaccompanied minors. Unaccompanied minors, yeah. Minus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a way of telling the story, is mm -hmm. to use the term. Yeah. I mean, I'm struck by the Sudanese community here, the, st the strong value that education plays. The the do you agree that that's something? Yes, I, I, I agree, and, and, it has, and it has something to do with our elders, like the teacher, teacher Panchol here, uh, that they, they at, at a very young age, they sensitize us that we should value education because when you learn, uh, that often opportunities for you to progress. And so when we relocated to the U.S., we still continue with that value, and so that is why uh, education is such a, a very, a very important uh, 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 value to us as a community and as a people. And 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 and, and I don't know how many times they told us mm -hmm. to take education seriously. They they said it time and again. Uh, so so that is why it is stuck with us. So let me go back uh, to the teacher and her 
so now it is 1998, 97, and then the US or the UNHCR and the USA, we want to take these boys. How yeah. did it happen? I mean, in fact, <laughs> there was a little resistance from some communities. Uh, and some communities do see when these children go there, they will get better life. They, they might also get the education. As an issue, people later on agreed that if they go there, uh, they will be getting better life and they might even, as a diaspora, they will be supporting us back because they will support families. And even those who might come to South Sudan also will, will transfer the education they, 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 they gain to South Sudan and help in the development of uh, South Sudan. So at the end, we came to realize that they are going to USA is not harmful, it's good. But yet, some people, including me, were seeing when they say lost boy, we thought our children got lost. <laughs> uh, but at the end, the issue, the issue of loss was, uh, was really in our uh, concept, was really very bad. If our children lost, uh, how will we get them? Yeah. But recently, we came to realize that these children have not lost because they still support the families back home yeah. as diaspora are even contributing in boosting the, the, the national e economy. <laughs> yeah. The national yeah. economy. So that thing is not existing at the moment in my yeah. mind. My coming here also uh, made me happy because I get most of them now uh, landed, some with master degrees, some with uh, PhDs, and, 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 and some with uh, degrees and so forth. Some are still in the schools. Strong Th that means families. our children are in yeah. good hands yeah. and are in good care. Yeah. So it's, we are really thankful to the uh, American people for having taken care of our children mm -hmm. uh, and, and the government at, uh, at the same time. We are happy on that. So the idea of being lost and not lost is not that existing at the moment. <laughs> yeah. and, helping, and helping to contribute to the communities of the United States and the overall stability of the world. I mean, because if any place is in war, it affects all of us. Yes, I, 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 yes, I agree, Megan. Yes, yes, yes. We are, as 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 the teacher said, we are uh, contributing to South Sudan in many ways. As the teacher said rightly, yeah. uh, we have we have been sending remittances that are supporting our families and our relatives back home. Uh, we are educating people. We are treating people. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, doing all sorts of things to help back home there, and 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 and, and that that is a great thing. And and to your point, we are contributing uh, to the U.S. Uh, as well. Uh, you know, uh, as an educator myself here at the University of Vermont, I am contributing uh, to 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 the U.S. in that regard. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a good citizen. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we are contributing to both places. And, and that makes the world a better place uh, in that regard. Yeah. Uh, uh, but again, uh, uh, I always go back and say, what if people like uh, Tisha Panchul, what if they did not design that program from day one? Yeah. Then we, we spent 15 years in both refugee camp from Ethiopia to Kenya. And, and then I come here at the age of 25. 22, 23, 21, with no education, where would I have begun? Mm. Do you think, as the teacher said, do you think there would be people with master's degree, with PhDs, uh, do you, with professional degrees in law and in medicine and all sorts of, do you think we will have those people? Maybe, but it would have been yeah. later on yeah. <laughs> if that were to happen. Yeah. So they did design a, a good program. And I was talking to, to people, I was talking, I, I was presenting to another group uh, a few weeks ago, and they were amazed uh, by the quality of education that came with us when we arrived here. And that actually helped us to get it started very quickly. Uh, and so, so we, me, I am always thankful to our teachers uh, who founded the program. And if, if we are fortunate to have one of them be with us, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then, 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 then it, it give us an opportunity for him 
to hear. We, we have always been telling you our story, but there has never been somebody like him who actually designed the program for us to actually tell their part of the story. Yeah. And we had that one today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, a sincere thank you. Thank you. For your work. Thank what you. are you doing? What do you what work? What are you doing here to visit? What are you who are you visiting in the U.S. here, and what are you doing in, in South Sudan now? In fact, they had a community meeting. Yeah. And the thought of calling me as a visitor, uh, my days are almost now uh, ending, and then I'll, 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 I'll leave soon. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to South Sudan. So I was uh, just kind of came here as a visitor. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, as you see, as you call me, the former uh, uh, president of board community in the U.S. Uh, we invited three of our elders. You know, in every four years, in every now three years, in every three years, we change leadership. Mm. And when we change leadership, we invite our elders to come and be part of us as we change the leadership so that mm. they can tell the new leadership some advice. And so we invited three of them, uh, uh, our community leader back home, and then he, uh, Usas Panchol, teacher Panchol, as our teacher. Mm -hmm. And then we invited uh, a medical doctor too. Uh, we is also running Alice program back home. So three of them came. Uh, the community leader just returned, and 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 and, and teacher Panchul only has uh, about a week yeah. uh, to return. And so that was how they came. And so we met. We changed the leadership, and then they have a little bit of time to visit people around the U.S. and to see some places. So hopefully, uh, he might be able to. Uh, to, 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 to visit Boston if... <laughs> yeah, if you get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and see other places, yeah. yeah, because Burlington is beautiful, but, but maybe he has been in the Midwest a lot, so yeah. maybe oh, uh, visiting city of Boston might see be a good ocean. experience. <laughs> and what have you learned from your students? Uh, to tell them. What have, what, what, what have you learned from your students oh, in your life as a very teacher? Very good, very good, very good. <laughs> Here or when I was in the and camp? You, wherever. Okay. In the course of your life. In <laughs> fact, when I came here, I was given a chance to give some kind of advice. Uh, I felt very happy because they were the very one that facilitated my ticket up to this end. And, and, and my stay here, they are taking care of me. And they will also take me back to to South Sudan. That is a reward. I'm very happy indeed. Uh, it's a reward because I've been traveling. You see these conditions. I've been moving with them without payment. <laughs> and now you're so I, 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 you felt, I felt I have done something. I, I felt I have done something. Uh, and I, I felt I'm rewarded because this movement was very difficult. Yeah. Uh, also, I'll go back here with a very good message that our children are doing well, are doing well. I will take the message home. They, they have not lost. Mm. <laughs> they have not they lost. lost. They have not yeah. lost. I, they are under the proper care. It doesn't uh, sound like you yeah. were ever lost. <laughs> it sounds like you had very good guidance. We have never been lost. And, 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 and even at the, as the teacher said, uh, even during the days when, we, when the name, the Lost Boys, came about, I, I had an issue with the name. Mm -hmm. But then I got over it and accepted it. We have never been lost. Uh, uh, in that regard, and 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 yes, and and we 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 have a good life here, and and we hope that to continue contributing to to the U.S., to South Sudan, and to humanity, and that that that's that is what the educators uh, want is 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 when you you get people, when you give people knowledge, uh, the goal is to improve humanity. And, 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 and I think they, they did that uh, to, uh, in a very significant way. Uh, if I would uh, add to your question, uh, Usad Panchol uh, is to us, as, as, as a professional educator, mm. is there any other profession better than education? No. <laughs> uh, to me, <laughs> no. Because it's my field, and I used to, when I was a teacher, I, I've undergone so many courses about the methodology, 
uh, I've gone, I attended some courses of psychology. I uh, have attended the management of primary schools in terms of resources and management of the curriculum. So to me, it has become my profession, and I, I do see it better than another job. Yeah. The reason I'm asking that, uh, <laughs> and I will, uh, 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 teacher Fankul, I will, uh, the reason why I ask you this question is, mm. and Megan, you would agree with me, mm. education tend not to be rewarded. Mm. <laughs> in a way other professions are. Do you agree with me? Even here in the US, yeah. public school teachers, in teacher punctual profession basically is K through 12. If we are talking about American education curriculum, you would be expert in K through 12. Yeah. The way the teachers are rewarded, compensated here in the US, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's not what we think their value or their contribution to the society is. That is also the case across the board. Yeah. And I don't know why, this is my problem, why does the society not reward people who are actually giving knowledge to other people mm -hmm. in a way that other professions are, in a way that other professions are being rewarded. Mm -hmm. I always have an issue with that. And so, uh, <laughs> it, and I have never found an educator who is not proud of their profession? And you have seen the answer from uh, from the teacher here. Uh, one last question is: Since you start teaching in 1978 mm. up to now, mm. you have educated a lot of people. Mm. It's, it's a lot of people. If you could look at back in Sudan, and then all in the refugee camp and internal displaced person camps, and up to now. What what is the one thing you are proud of? Yeah, in fact, yeah, I'm always very proud. I remember uh, I went to the hospital in Juba. I went and found a very long queue. Long line. <laughs> long line. Uh -huh. Then when I came and stand behind, one of my, my boys I taught saw me as a medical doctor. He has just ordered workers to come and call me, and I was given number one treatment. <laughs> I'm very proud about that. This is my production. This is my product. <laughs> this is my product. You were so, uh, that, that, That's fine. Yeah. Also, when I was invited, uh, I was doing the other businesses. But they say, let us bring our teacher. Let us bring our teacher. I'm very proud when I came and saw them, most of them, I, the, the very good number of uh, my boys uh, completed universities and degrees and master degrees. Oh, oh yeah. I'm very proud about yeah. this, this, this. I'm part of that. Yeah. So I'm very proud about you, people. I'm very proud of those who have taught before the war, because most of them now are, in the, are doing well in, in, in the government of South Sudan. Yeah. Uh, so I'm happy on that, and I'm very proud about them. Yeah. Yes, if yeah. I could add to the teacher's answer is those of us who are here, those that have been taught in the refugee camp and other places, there are more of them back home than us here. Mm. And they are also educated too. Yeah, exactly. And they are also contributing yeah. uh, to South Sudan. The development of South Sudan. To the development of South Sudan. Yeah. I think that uh, uh, we will end. This this is the end of all of the questions that I have. Mm. And, 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 and the only things that I would ask you at the final thing is, is if you could go back <coughs> uh, during, during the time when you 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 and your colleague <coughs> started the program, to when you came to the U.S., is there anything you could do different if you were to do it again? Mm. Is there anything you could do differently? There was nothing to do apart from education. We our plans and intention was to see you getting the knowledge. Uh, when uh, when the country got an independent. Automatically, the, the question of development and service delivery comes in. Mm -hmm. 
So apart from education you got here, I, I don't think we would have nothing more than that. <laughs> Our intention was to get you educated, mm. uh, to see you living better life because you were dis deprived of, uh, of staying with your families and your, 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 your relatives. So there's nothing apart from education. That was our intention to see you educated and so forth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is there any final question, Megan? Um, I think not. I think okay. you're continuing to be an educator now in South Sudan. I'm almost retiring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost uh, 66, 67 years yeah. now. Yeah. So I'm doing other businesses now yeah. at the moment. But we remain always as consultants. When yeah. the, 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 there's need, we come and uh, come and advise and, and support on the educational line. That's all. Uh, and how? Uh, Sorry. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy with the channel, with the management of this channel. Yeah. Thank you for joining uh, us. Thank you very much. It's a golden opportunity for me just to converse with you. And I'm very proud about these children because these are children from my home country. Whenever I see, see them suffering, I always feel bad, and when I see them better off and good in education and with better services, with proper security, I feel also very happy because I'm part and the partial of this program since 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 in '83 up to the moment. Mm. I'm also very I'm very happy. I don't know whether I will get this one because these documents are completely we we didn't have. Yep. I don't know whether I will get a, a, I can get you one. Or get me one. Okay, I, I it's it's very important. So thank you to the channel management of this mm -hmm. channel. Otherwise, I have nothing more to add. Apart, apart from thank you. Uh, thanks to the people of uh, USA and the American government for this proper care taken with, with my kids and so forth. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th thank you so much, uh, 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 Tisha Panchol, and, and I assume that you will write a book about this experience. That would be my uh, recommendation. Okay. Uh, if you write a book about this story, I think that people will be interested uh, uh, in reading it. And uh, this, is, this concludes uh, this program. Uh, we have just ended uh, interviewing uh, uh, Tisha uh, Usats Panchol Jonkunyukur. Uh, who was uh, a teacher uh, for the Lost Boys since the program was started in Ethiopia, Penyudu. And he just came to visit us and he will be returning home soon. Uh, so to Burman audience and to all our audience around the world, we have just, you have just had the, the interview with the teacher and we hope you have enjoyed uh, hearing from him about how they established the story of the Lost Boys. <laughs> And I, as part of the Lost Boys, <coughs> I would take this opportunity to thank uh, the teacher and his colleague uh, for establishing a very successful program mm. uh, who have given us head start what would be an equivalent of K through 12 education uh, that came to us here uh, to the U.S. And we have been able to actually go to universities because of the quality of that education. And we are very thankful uh, to our teacher who is here in the studio and to all his colleagues uh, around the world, some of them who may have passed and some of them who are still there. Uh, we owe them a huge, a huge, a huge appreciation for that. And, and, and to conclude, of course, uh, I always uh, thank American people and Bromantes for taking care of us. Uh, we have been successful here and we have built successful life here because of the opportunity that American people have afforded us, and I call myself a proud U.S. citizen. So this ends uh, our program, and thank you so much. And again, uh, my name is Akol Agwek Wong. I will end it there, and thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.